Hello, it's Good Friday. Our passage today, Luke 23, tells the story of how Jesus came to be sentenced to death. The circumstances were a mixture of dedicated opposition and hatred, political weakness and mob mentality. Factors we can no doubt identify in our own world that conspire together against the purposes of God. There were people in the religious assembly that had decided that Jesus' time was up and there was no longer any tolerance for his presence in the world. They took him to Pilate, telling tales on him. We found this man subverting our nation. He opposes payment of taxes to Caesar and claims to be Messiah, a king. Pilate, they knew, had the power to do their dirty work for them. Could use his power to have Jesus executed. But to their disappointment, no doubt, he announced to them that he could find no basis for a charge against Jesus. Pilate, then in the face of their anger, instead of doing the right thing, decided to pass Jesus on to King Herod. Verse 8 tells us that Herod was pleased to see Jesus, actually, and had been wanting to meet him for a long time. He wanted Jesus to do a sign or a miracle for him and so put him under the spotlight to see what he could do, to see what he was made of. But the Bible tells us that Jesus gave no answer at all. How easy it would have been for Jesus to seek a way out by using his power to impress the king. Instead, he chose to allow himself to be ridiculed and mocked. And because he wouldn't do anything, he was passed back to Pilate. Pilate continued to insist that there was no basis for any charge. But instead of showing courage and leadership, he decided to go for an opinion poll and leave it up to the crowds of people who now didn't want this episode to end without a drama. This was like a reality TV show that the people were now in control of. They decided he must die. A perfect storm of godlessness, hatred, aggression and sin, all focused on Jesus, the saviour of the world. The light of the world seemingly being overcome by darkness. This was a disaster in the making. But at the heart of this storm was a man, Jesus, completely in control of himself, being physically pushed and pulled through the corridors of power, but living in complete freedom, possessing the power to overcome them all, but choosing to submit himself to their evil plans. While his accusers sought strength from each other and used whatever levers they could think of to stage manage their desired outcome, Jesus quietly submitted, knowing that this was the route to ultimate victory, the salvation of the world and the establishment of the kingdom of God. We come at the Easter story knowing the end from the beginning, and in a way that can remove the power of our understanding of what was actually happening here. Darkness all around, evil unleashed, murderous intent, and yet in Jesus there was a quiet, unshakable resolve. Not knowing the fullness of all that was ahead, but knowing that all he had to do could not be achieved by fighting this battle on their terms. He was prepared to suffer the darkness because he knew ultimately it could not defeat him. And it was actually the route to accomplishing all that God the Father had laid on him to do. Verse 25 says that after Pilate had been pressurised by the crowds to release Barabbas and to crucify Jesus, it says he released the man who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and murder, the one they asked for, and surrendered Jesus to their will. The wonderful fact of the matter is that Jesus was surrendered to no one's will. He chose the cross and in doing so not only set us free but set a perfect example. The challenges and storms of life sometimes cannot be overcome. They cannot be prayed away. They cannot be avoided. So what do we do? We learn to trust. We live in the freedom we have as children of God. We don't second guess the outcome, but with a calm and determined outlook, we keep moving forward in faith. If Jesus had sought to manipulate 
or control the outcome, if he had complained or if he'd argued or if he'd protested, then none of what he was given to do would have been achieved. God was prepared to present the world with an appearance of utter failure and tragedy. Seemingly endless hours and days when there was nothing but memories and thoughts of what might have been. Nothing but sadness and grief and tears. God was prepared to weave all of that into the outworking of his purposes. He was prepared for all that to be the backdrop of Jesus' faith and obedience. As we face up to our call to follow Jesus, are we prepared to follow him everywhere he goes? Often our response to being in a situation like Jesus found himself in is to wonder where he's gone. Why he doesn't seem to be there. How can he allow this sort of thing to happen to us? What Good Friday teaches us is that following Jesus means following him through darkness, uncertainty and stress in order to follow him into life and light and the freedom of eternity. This Good Friday, let's reflect on the opportunity to follow him. And even when the path is difficult and dark and dangerous, let's do it knowing that ultimately in following him, we can come to no harm at all. Let's pray. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for Easter. Thank you for Good Friday. Thank you for all that it lays before us, for the example that it sets us and for the challenge that it gives us. Through the power of your spirit, I pray that you would fill us, you would equip us and you would enable us to be followers of Jesus in this world. Amen.